Hello, and welcome back, everybody. My name is Kunda, and this is Circular T, my Falador area Ultimate Iron Man. We have been taking a little break, about two or three weeks, from playing RuneScape. I know it's a tragic EXP waste. We have got a whole lot of things that we need to do before we get into the bulk of this video. Also, we aren't actually wearing that thing. We are making those things. We have some skilling goals that we need to get into doing in this video before, you know, the exciting-ish stuff. So drop all those and make a few hundred more of them so we can reach our level goals. Speaking of level goals, I should probably throw those up on the screen now. We've got three of them that we need to get through. In total, we have, if my math is right, 54 levels to get. So here is the first of an unfortunate many. Let's get them done. I figure maybe I should also flash where we're at with the stats, so here you go. I want a little more inventory space, and honestly, it'll probably be good for the pacing of this video anyway, so we are completing Hero's Quest. And both my area locked Iron Man and my main need to get Hero's Quest done, so you know, two birds stoned at once. Let's do this. And one quest partially requiring some totally successful forced socialization later. Quest complete. Let's see how bad this is. And that seems to be the only skill that we actually ended up leveling in. Right on. With a few more inventory slots left, we can get back to our crafting grind. Level 47 crafting. Several days later. My ass missed the level, but there it is. Level 50 crafting. That's what we need right now, but we still have 29 spools of thread. I, I know they only cost like 1 GP, but I don't want to waste them, so I'm going to use them. Maybe we'll get another level? Uh, I don't know, but uh, our ultimate crafting goal is much higher, so le let's get that experience anyway. We are done our crafting grind for now. I want to get started on our fleshing, but I also want to take a little bit of a break, handle a few things in the meantime. Let's do a little bit of Slayer. After my last video, I asked a question about dog Slayer tasks. Probably one of the more inconvenient Slayer tasks that we can get from Turrail. The results of the straw poll, I asked, were very lackluster, didn't get really any feedback. However, on the unique Iron Man Reddit, things weren't so bad. And taking those results into consideration, I think the clear choice to do is to kill jackals. I am pretty sure we can't access the Jackals from the Calphite dungeon without first letting a rope down from the surface. However, I'm gonna try that first, and then if that doesn't work, we are gonna go up there once, drop the rope down, and we will have a place that's not all that far away from the extended Falador connected underground where we can complete our dog slayer tasks. Okay, so first we go down here. Then, if we can go through here, that's what we're gonna do. Hell yeah, it works. I was afraid we would need some huge agility requirement or something. Have, have I been here already? I guess it doesn't matter. Let's kill these jackals if there are any around here. Desert Wolf? Does Desert Wolf count? We need to find some of these jackals before we die of thirst. So we've started taking thirst damage. I am not seeing any jackals around here. Lots of Desert Wolves. 
wolves. But no jackals. Desert wolf, desert wolf. What is going on? Some goats, they are not going to count for task. There is no rope here. I don't know if we need one every time to get down there, but I'm glad I brought one from Keldegrim, so let's install it. Well, this is unfortunate, and I should have known it wasn't going to be that easy. I was hoping there was going to be jackals somewhere in here. Unfortunately, that is not the case. I need to decide if I want to chase jackals by coming somewhere down in one of these areas or more likely if I'm gonna come over here it seems like this is the best option however I'm gonna need to stock up on food because it seems like part of the challenge should be going there killing my jackals for the slayer task and most likely teleporting out before we die of thirst which sucks I expect for dogs, because of that, to be the most unpleasant of Slayer tasks. So by no means do I plan to do this for every single Jackal task, but for this first one, uh, I might as well just show you how this half a task ends up going. We only have 17 left, but let's see how treacherous this is. Okay, so, I was pretty well damn sure that we hadn't completed that Dog Slayer task. Apparently though, I guess we did. Or something. I don't know what happened. I have no idea what happened, but our task is zombies now for whatever reason. So, let's go do that. If you haven't already been able to tell, the place that we are able to access zombies to kill for Slayer. Well, the best place, according to our region-specific account build, happens to be in the Stronghold of Security. It's not ideal. I would have liked something closer to Falador, but there are a few things that Stronghold of Security seems like the best option we got kind of funny we go from the literal desert to such a deserty looking area but whatever let's use this food so we can get to our fletching now we've got a bear task 45 bears i wonder if that'll cost us five potatoes or not now we've got a ghost task and now we're fletching oak logs going for our 51 57, something like that, fletching level. I have used a whole lot of resources in this building, but I think this is the first time we have ever used this particular object. But it's time. And we've got an achievement diary task in the Falador area. Off the list. Damn it, Rune Light. So we've been cutting out logs on the other side of the wall, cutting them into oak longbows, selling them at the store for a little bit of money, and we've just hit level 35 fletching, we can now upgrade to Willow. And here we've got level 40 fletching. My understanding is now we can make Willow longbows? Yeah, Willow longbows. That'll be a little bit of a boost to our experience, and unfortunately now we start the longest and most excruciating part of this grind. I missed the level up screen, but as you can see, we just hit level 60 wood cutting. That means we can cut yew trees now, which in a way is nice, but in another way, kind of a slap in the face. 
I would like to use Yubos at some point, probably. It, it's a step up from Maple, which is currently the best bow we have access to because we can purchase it in the Keldegrim shop. However, we don't really need to get our fletching that high. It, we will only need to get our fletching that high if I decide I want to use a Yubo, which I might, but I can't yet. I can't burn you logs. Uh, I can't do anything with you, so it, it, it's a bit of a mixed bag getting the level, but we got the level. Level 50 fletching on one hand, I wish it was closer than it feels to our goal, level 59. On the other hand, I am happy that the interruptions between levels are getting further and further apart for the amount of grinding we're doing. We are only two-thirds of the way there, but whatever. We are getting there. Uh, I was hoping for a one-step casket. I hate this step. Cool. Can't ever get one of those. I was one clue off. The last clue wasn't a good one-step clue, but this one was. And I might stack them, but I, I don't want to stack them. Yeah, we are definitely not stacking. Let's see what's in this clue box. Literal trash. So we just got the elusive one clue step casket while we're streaming on Twitch. If you haven't tuned in before, feel free to tune in. Tune in but... Our last casket was kind of crap. Let's see if we do any better on this casket. Not really. A battle axe is better than a steel dagger, but still pretty crap. Well, that is certainly a woodcutting level, and we are rapidly approaching where we need to be for fletching. Finally, we're here at this lake. We've been here for a while almost a week, if not longer, and it's time. Level 59 fletching. All that for this. Medium task in the Valador area completed. Now let's hop back over. Almost cleared some inventory space at the shop. Then I realized... There's another Valador medium task. Okay, Terrell, be nice to us. We still got ghosts. That's what we're on. While I forgot about our existing Slayer task, and that's not all that professional, we can do this, steal some wine, get another medium slayer task, anger these guys a little bit. So we've got another one of those dog tasks, which I hate. But, because the only weapon we have is our air staff right now, let's boost ourselves. Let's see if we can find it, and make a battle axe. We've got a whole bunch of food, we're at 25 Slayer, we only need 32 for the goal we're going for. Let's go do a full dog task, see if we get the food to survive in the desert long enough to actually get the tasks done, and hope we don't get another one of these tasks for a long, long, long time. Okay, let's give this a try.
Okay, that was heartbreaking, but achievable. So there are two very impossible Slayer tasks that we can get from Turrell. Dogs, which you've just seen, and what do you think that we just got? Yeah, we're going back to the desert. This guy really does not like us right now. So inventory space is not our most important thing right now, but it's important enough that let's try and get this done. Put the swamp tire in the still. Okay. Did I forget the tinderbox? I thought we just had to fill the lantern, but we need to light the lantern. And there we go. Medium Falador task complete. Okay, so after a little bit of Slayer grinding, we are here at where Skippy is throwing his vials into the water. We've got all of the items that we could obtain within our area, and then the nettles, which are, as far as I know, the only ones that we weren't able to get. Let's get this mini quest over with and kill a moger. I love that this guy has sober up as, like, a default action option to go with. Let's see what the animation looks like. Why didn't we sober him up? I click sober up. Yes, throw the water. Okay, we have to wait until he's stopped. Throw the water. There we go. Let's give the man his tea. And let's give the man his hangover cure. Now, this isn't somewhere we're going to regularly be. This is probably somewhere we are only going to be the one time. We just unlocked the music track. We have never been here before. We're almost certainly, if not certainly, never going to be here again. However, we have one fishing explosive in our inventory. We need to kill one moger. Pretty sure that shouldn't be all that much of a chore. And for this one moger, if we get anything exciting, I'm gonna say we can keep it because it's part of the Falador Achievement Diary. Welcome to eternity, moger! And there it is, our medium Falador area achievement diary task. All we get though is five fishing bait. Taking his bones though. We also need all of this sweet, sweet prayer experience that we can get. So, dump the moger remains in the ground behind that tree. And let's continue on to the next task we have to do before we get to the main event. I might as well alchemize this mithril battle axe because we're not going to need it anymore and when we do need a combat weapon we will probably use something a little better than that. For the main event we're gonna need a soul rune which means we need to acquire a soul rune within the Falador area, and there's only one way I know about going to do that. And also, for my achievement diary goal for this episode, we need a couple more farming levels. And to work on accomplishing both of those, you know where we're going. World hopping. We're doing some world hopping. Unless when I come back from my snack and watching my episode of Deep Space Nine, the crop circle happens to be here, but we'll see if we get lucky. Nope, not lucky. Let's see how many world hops it takes to find a portal to Pura Pura.
did I literally just see the portal disappear in front of us? Was that what happened there? Okay, that took way, way too many world hops to find a crop circle, but let's get to it. Only four levels of hunter training to go, I think? First inventory of implings and we get one of these things. Damn it, we go to check the clue scroll and to sell off our gourmet ampling loot, and the portal's gone. Well, this is an interesting, easy clue step. I can't remember the last time we've got it, if ever. Do I want to leave to do it right now, though? Not sure how lucky we are, how possible it is to complete a chain of easy steps, but this is not the one. So, I have tested it. Clearly, but having a garden pie makes our farming grind a little bit easier. Originally I thought we would need to get the level to grow watermelons from scratch and also have to find some watermelon seeds because we don't have any. Because we have half a garden pie left, we just need to get the watermelon seeds. We have a few ways to go about doing this. The most difficult way, which would be to kill the giant mole and trade in the fruits of our labor there to Wisen the Gardener for bird's nests, which give us the best chance of getting watermelon seeds. The most difficult or tedious, depending on how you look at it, ways to go about doing it are to kill either Black Knights, Hill Giants, or Unarmed Hobgoblins, and go for a really elusive 1 in 600 some drop rate. The middle of the road option would be killing Armed Hobgoblins, which takes the drop rate from 1 in 600 something to 1 in 100 something. So we had been in Piro Piro for a little while I decided to take a break while I was farming because I want to try and work on getting enough seeds to grow some watermelons. Unfortunately, we want to be killing a whole lot of these guys. Not those guys, these guys that are armed with the spear because they have different drop tables. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that there is only one of those guys with the spear at this particular location, which is the only place that we can kill hobgoblins, and everywhere else there's a couple other monsters, like I had said, that give us similar drop rates to these unarmed hobgoblins, but the armed hobgoblin is the only one who gives us a 1 in 177 and a half chance to get watermelon seeds, whereas all the other hobgoblins give us 1 in 651. That said, the 1 in 651 gives us two seeds, whereas the 1 in 177 only gives us one seed. What I'm getting at is this is being a pain to do. <laughs> And it all started because I planted the second Harlander seed I had. I was like, let's grow the Harlander plant, go back, when I'm done for the night. Really? Another one? When I was done for the night, I was going to plant my last Harlander seed so I could get that inventory slot back. We just got a second Harlander seed, or in this case, a third Harlander seed because we've got one planted already. What a night. I'm real close to just going back and watching the mole finale video where we actually got a giant mole kill and seeing if it's worth trying to do that again to get the bird's nests to get watermelon seeds more easily that way if we can actually manage mole kills, which that's really the question, isn't it, right now? I was starting to lose hope. And to be honest, I was figuring that we were unlucky and starting to get a little thankful for being unlucky. 
But here it is. We've got our first watermelon seed. Now we only need two more. And I'm not sure which variety of hobgoblins is better for going for that. Do we go for the higher chance with one seed? Or the much lower chance, which will net us two seeds if we actually get the drop? I don't know. I do know that we're getting kind of low on health. We're basically out of food. Yeah, we've got to leave. I gave up the Pura Pura hunting grind for a little while because I made some very, very questionable inventory management decisions. Our farming plots are not doing very good, but I'm gonna leave them, come back after a little while, and have more inventory space. Because we have a couple of herb seeds we want planted, I can do all of those tomatoes and clear that space, and hopefully we get no more herb seeds ever again until we have all our watermelons. So, you might be wondering why we're down here. And that's because we can steal both Swamp Tire and full Bullseye Lanterns from the Cave Goblins. You might be wondering why we need a light source. And that's because I just went back and watched, I think it's the third part of episode 12 if I remember right, and checked the stats that I had when I killed my first giant mole, and my only giant mole so far. I haven't killed one yet this year, so we're gonna try and do that and see if it's any easier for us now. Okay, wish me luck. We have found it. Let's see how this goes. And it ha already has damage on it. Not what we want. Okay, does this one have any damage on him? We're about to find out. Don't run away from us. Not a great start. It is not seeming very much easier than the last time we did this. So, it's taken almost a half an hour, but we are down the first stage. We are at exactly half of the mole's health. Thank you, Runelight. And hopefully this chase part doesn't go too terribly. We've got a seven hit point head start on it. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. This could go fairly well. It could take a while. We could get crashed. I hope we don't get crashed. But I hope even more that this mole decides to stick around for the entire kill and maybe... Uh, I don't like this feeling. Really don't like this feeling. Okay guys, we are about an hour in and we only got an eighth of its health left. So, mixed feelings on one hand, it's good that we're still doing it. On the other hand, we're probably not going to kill too many, if any more of these, after we get this one kill and try our luck with all of the bird nests we get. Was hoping that an extra 10-ish strength levels and a few extra attack levels would have done more, but apparently not. Might also have to do with using an adamant mace instead of a rune pickaxe or a rune sword, which we could have got access to, but too late now. You live and you learn, unless I forget to throw my prayer on when we go attack, eat this last potato, and get right reckless in trying to get this last eighth of its health down, in which case we die and we learn. One of the very rare times when Sandwich Lady is helpful. Come on, Mole, two more hits, you can die, respawn, go back to whatever Mole stuff you do down here. Three more good hits now, I guess. This thing recharges its health in such a weird way. Sometimes 
I'll hit like a one or a two, and it'll seem like it just didn't regain or lose any health at all. It just stays there. And sometimes I'll not get a hit for a while, and it'll go up by like eight. Just saw a guy down here. Hoping he decides to not crash me. As you know, that's something he could do if he wanted to. And he is apparently deciding to be a dick. Okay, so he took his cannon down, but he's still running around here. What is this guy thinking? Does he just want to see what I'm doing? Is he trying to cover the space that I haven't got to try and kill the mole? This is the struggle of not having a completed achievement diary. So, person is actually being pretty cool and helping me to locate where the mole is instead of crashing me, so... Yay, cooperation! Not that kind of cooperation! Fucking really? Really? Well, there goes however long of my life. Two, maybe three hours, something like that. Yeah, it doesn't really work like that. It's hard to be mad when a person seems to not understand, but yeah. No use to me now, buddy. I think that might be the first unintentional crash. What is my life? So, I'm gonna give this giant mole thing one more shot, and if we get crashed again, or if it doesn't work, I'll probably go back to Hobgoblins, because I don't want to waste another two hours for nothing. I also don't want to spend much more time recording it, so unless it goes well, you'll probably not see very much of it. Okay, this kill is actually going a whole lot smoother. We've used all our prayer points pretty well, except for nine. But we've been using prayer before we've been using food, and we've only used two bits of food and only four hit points left on this mole. I'm pretty happy about it. Maybe we should be doing all of our mole kills at 5 to 7 a.m. in the morning. And there it goes. Blood runes and plenty of rolls at mole stuff. If we get another kill like this, I might only need to restock on my prayer points and not even bother with food. Like, that went really well. Now we just gotta hope we get lucky on these bird nest rolls. One in nine chance at watermelon seeds. All right, let's see what our roll luck is like. Maple seed. We recently just got the farming level to be able to grow maple seeds in the tree patches around, so not 
the best start, but also not the worst start. That is useless to us. Those aren't very helpful. We can use them, but they're not what we want. And more Limpert. We're, we're, eh, can't even say it right now. Damn it. Well, that is a little bit upsetting, but that mole kill went so well. I feel like we just start putting these seeds in the ground and go for another. Probably get some leftovers for a quick breakfast first. It's not going as fast as I'd like, but I don't know if it's luck, if it's our extra levels, or if I've just got the tactic down, not that you can tell from that. But it's going a whole lot better, and we only got one more hit to get on this mole before we've got our third mole kill. And we get a shiny new sword. I was hoping for that drop. If I'm satisfied with the adamant instead of a rune sword, that saves us about 40k. Right on. And we get full drops for chances at our watermelon seed. That was a good mole. Yeah, we are definitely keeping this adamant long sword. It is for sure an upgrade over the mace. Sorry, mole. I might come back for more of you later. I've got to say, this load of bird's nest does not look near as promising as the first one. That might sell for something. Let's go to the store and open the rest. It's a little bit of a pain to do, but this feels like it's a hell of a lot more likely to get us the watermelon seeds. Gold ring. Not what we want. One in nine, give us the watermelon seeds. More limper roots. Great. On the plus side, killing more mole might get us a mithril plate body. There's the chance for a rune medium helmet drop too, though I'm not sure if I'd prefer that over the initiate helmet right now. If I'm... yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I can see what I forgot to do last time I was here. Weird. Last night we got an oddly useful sandwich lady event, and this morning we get an oddly useful strange plant event. What do you got for me? More blood rooms, but a full pack of chances at our seeds. Also, that mole kill, we only use nine prayer points and one piece of food. It actually feels like a bit of a waste. I think we're gonna go for the two mole KC one trip. We got really lucky that time I think it we got the KC in under 45 minutes but also we didn't even use the same we didn't even use the strange fruit to recharge our energy. I guess here's a little question of the day. Considering these equipment bonuses and these stats for what the mole has for defensive capacity, are we, for mole kills, are we better off to use the slash option on the adamant longsword or the stab option? There we go, level 40 defense. That's a bit of a milestone. Now we can wear rune armor. If we get the rune medium helmet drop from this mole, we can actually wear it if we want to. This kill didn't go as fast as the last one and also gave us more blood runes, oddly, but we got our first two mole KC trip in the bag. Also, it was a whole lot more resource intensive. Okay, we have seven chances at getting our watermelon seeds. Are we lucky today? Hell yeah we are! There are two watermelon seeds. We also have five more nests to check and see if we get more. Right on! 
Let's open the rest of these gift boxes. Candidized seed, can't use that. More watermelon seeds. Six strawberry seeds, that's useful. Last two nests. Three more limper roots. Eh. And another useless herb seed. I would have liked to get at least one more watermelon seed, but we got what we're after. That's all I can ask for. Is this rare drop table right here? These rune jab ones? If so, it's probably the lamest rare drop table drop I could get, but it's a thing anyway. This isn't what I need to be doing, but from all that mole killing, we got so much limper roots that I don't want to let the experience go to waste. I'm killing these for Terramins, doing a cycle of getting the Terramins out of the bank. That is another gem table drop. I'll take the crafting experience too, but that's not what I want. But yeah, I came here with all my empty inventory spaces filled with limpert roots that I unnoted at the bank. Converted them all to strength potions using Terramin and Vial of Water Drops from the Chaos Druids. And now I'm getting ready to head back to the bank. I just want to do it with all my empty inventory spaces again filled with Terramin before I do some herb lore in Valador and then come back with all limper roots again. Repeat the process as I need to until I have these 30 limper roots out of my inventory and converted to herb lore experience. Hopefully we get a level. Hopefully we don't waste too much time, because like I said, this really is not what I need to be doing right now. We will get to the main event here shortly. It will not take all that much longer. Just had a Prison Pete event, and we are getting loaded up on noted diamonds, which we don't really need, but I will not complain about either. I'm not sure if I showed my stats at the beginning of this video or not, and I'll be sure to do it at the end of this video, but here is where they sit as of now. Okay team, this is big. We're gonna eat our garden pie, and we're gonna plant our watermelon seeds. The first watermelon seeds on the account, and probably the most important watermelons we will ever grow on RuneScape. Now we just sit here and wait for a half hour or something while these watermelons grow and they don't get diseased and we definitely make sure that if they do we cure the disease because that guy over there will only watch them for curry leaves, and I don't want to stack up 10 curry leaves from Pearl Puro right now. I would rather sit here and watch. So that is what me and this little tool leprechaun are gonna do. So we didn't need to stay here, but better safe than sorry, we have our first watermelons on the account. And we have our scarecrow. And that is a completed medium task in the Falador area. Hell yeah. That was a lot of hours for a scarecrow though. Just look at that magnificent Oh, would you leg. look at that? Put that Just on. look at that. I can't pull it out either. I'd have to drill. Another oddly, but thankfully convenient, random event. Let's get this strange plant for the minuscule, but helpful amount of run energy it restores. Okay, we're here in Puro Puro. Watching some Bow of the Fifth Column talk about the Russian situation, that sort of thing. I like keeping up on current events, but as you could just see there, we just got our 42 Hunter. We can now hunt for Essence Implings, which is really nice for us for a couple different reasons, but mostly because 
we can now get runes, which means we can now go for the soul rune that we need. Are we going to get the first, not exactly KC, sort of KC, Essen Impling Jar soul rune? No, we get four lava runes. Not what we need. At all. But, we're on Essen Simplings, and that feels good. Well, we finally got our soul rune, and from that grind to get the soul rune, we have a whole bunch of missile runes that we might as well use before we start the main event, get a little bit experience before we risk losing a whole bunch of stuff, because I haven't been to where we're going on any account for quite a while. Okay, so now we need to buy the chest piece for our armor set. I didn't want to have the extra 8 pounds on while we were doing all that impling catching and running around, but now we got it. Now we've got to pray to our runescape god Guthix for what might be the only time on this account for a medium task in the Falador area complete. Now we get a few runecrafting levels. We can make three mind runes from each essence. That's actually pretty good. So now we can actually get to the main event. And this is it. We are starting and hopefully completing the Legends Quest. We are gonna need this. How does he know my character's name? Quest started. So this is where we are gonna start mapping the Crossy Jungle. And here we should be able to complete our map of the jungle on the western shore. There we go. We talked to that forester over there and got a full roar. And we've made contact with one of the locals. And here is the big part of the quest. We need to rescue Ungadulu. Try. First try. First try. First try. First try. Got him! <laughs> okay, that's our guy, but this is looking like it's gonna be trickier than it originally seemed. The guy seems to be of uh, split minds, and it's not just that he occasionally seems to turn red. Gotta go back to Puro Puro and track down a mind rune. I probably should have kept one, but. Way she goes. And way she goes, he said. We're gonna need some of these, which I don't really like doing, but also it isn't totally out of line since we need them for a quest, but since we can access them within our area, technically. One of the next couple videos may include a mid to low mid 70s thieving grind. But this quest needs to be done. I don't have time for that right now. And y'all are probably wanting a new video anyway. Uh, I hope this is what's supposed to be happening. Looks like it. We have the binding book. Is that guy in a max cape down here? Huh. Anyway, we've also got some freed up inventory spaces, and I was starting to feel a little bit claustrophobic about my inventory. Probably not going to be the last time in this quest. Now that I think about it, I guess you don't need to have all the quests done to have a max cape, but still kind of a weird sight. Let's make this gold bowl. golden bowl blessed. That was a little weird. I'm thinking it is time for the first combat of this quest.
Alright, so that was pretty much what I expected, pretty much how I remember doing it back in pre-old school RuneScape time. Okay, so we've had a spell cast on us, which means we can walk through this, and now we gotta go plant the yummy tree. Yummy tree, yummy tree, now I want lunch. We have germinated the yummy seeds. We've got our unpowered orbs, we've got a bravery potion made. My understanding is we can drink the bravery potion, so let's do that to save on inventory space. And I'm not sure if I said this part yet, maybe I did, but now we're gonna go get some cosmic runes from some big level 24 frogs. So we only had limited, and by that I mean zero luck getting cosmic runes from the frogs. It is a drop on their table, I just never hit it. So, we're going back to Piro Piro, again, to try and get more Cosmic Runes, because we've already got one drop of Cosmic Runes from an Essence Simpling so far, but they dropped four, and I need six. I mean, if my luck is that bad, I might try and make do with three. Less than five minutes into Piro Piro this time, and we've got our Cosmic Runes. Let's pick up our orbs before they disappear, and give this rest of the quest a shot. And here we're being warned about three of the fights that are coming up. Safely made that massive descent, and I'm glad we did, because I didn't want to waste food here. one fight down. Second warrior beaten. I should really keep the music off. I, I enjoy listening to it, but it does not make for the best clips. And the last warrior. told me such a hard part of this quest would be getting through this door backwards, I wouldn't have believed you. And in case you haven't figured out what we're doing, we are not completing this quest by re-killing the undead wizard, we are giving the dagger to the shaman. So cool. Now I understand these have equipment or supplies or something in them. No, that's not what we want. Okay, these really aren't what we want. We just almost fell off this massive cliff, which does 40 something damage, and we only had 45 hit points. We're down to 40 now, but. Holy shit, am I being cautious at this second? Waiting for our agility to restore, and I also might eat our last little bit of food, because none of those barrels, which the wiki said had food, had anything except enemies in them. Yeah, that was sketchy. Glad I ate that food now, because if we would have fallen there, we probably could have died. Huh? Only got lucky and took five damage there? This place has it out for me right now. <laughs> Let's hope the second Nezectioned fight goes better than getting to it is going. 
Zero on protect from magic. Use the spell on him. Thought he started off with magic. Oh well. Hopefully we can endure this fire blast. I keep forgetting we can use the prayer restore on our shield, but that might not be the best way to go about it anyway. Restock some supplies though, we are getting low. In the meantime though, let's figure out which angle we can actually push this boulder from. Not that one, not the one we tried before we started recording, it's gotta be this one. Really? Not this one either? Can we push it from the top? There we go. Water is flowing again. Just restocking here, getting some prayer potions, and because while we kill these guys, they do so little damage that we basically can restore our health. But I am really wishing that we could use this altar slab to restore prayer. That would be nice. So we've restocked, but I have a problem. Apparently, you can only cut the tree to make the totem pole at the end of the quest using a rune axe. Up until this point, I've been using an iron axe. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. The two options I have right now are to go to Hasidius, which I don't think I've ever been to before. I could be wrong, but I don't think I have. I have zero Hasidious favor, so I would need to get it all the way up to 75% to be able to enter the woodcutting guild, and then spend basically all of my gold coins on a rune axe from the guild. Alternatively, I could do the table trick to put all of my weapons and armor on a table and hope they're still there when I get back, and go to Entrana, get a Draymond staff, so I can go to the Enchanted Valley and get a rune axe that way. Okay, wish me luck. It seems to have gone alright so far. Let's hope for the best. And it's all still here. Right on. It was at this moment. I just got to this precise tile when I realized that just because I have access to the Lost City doesn't mean I have access to the Fairy Rings. I've been playing too much today. Yep, we haven't been over here yet. It feels so dirty. I don't like it. I'm... Yeah, I'm just gonna double check. We can't use Fairy Rings. I think we need to have done both Fairy Tale 1 and started 2, but I'm gonna double check that. It's looking like we're gonna need to pay that overpriced to Sidious woodcutting guild axe though. So. Yep, we need to do that one quest we don't have and start another one. I'm not gonna do that. It is looking like, unfortunately, we are going to need to grind some Hasidious Favor. I think we can do that without any extra quests. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Ugh. I don't like this. That was really stupid of me. Turns out, we haven't been here before, but if we're going to complete this quest, we need that rune axe. This really feels like the walk of shame. Forgot a fucking hammer. Okay, so 
I, I don't know if we're gonna do anything else or if we're gonna go straight to 75% favor here, but we are going to be plowing fields for a while. Never would have thought this was gonna happen. I'm gonna take a break for a little while. I've got some things to think about. We're gonna come back, but I I've got to think about this a little bit more. So, I've been doing some thinking, and normally, I, I got a fair amount of trust in the wiki. It, it doesn't seem to be wrong very often. But, in this particular case, before we potentially ruin our account by entering the woodcutting guild and getting 75 Fasidious favor and all the out-of-area experience required for that, I'm going to make a Mithril Hatchet and see if we can complete our quest using the Mithril Hatchet and not whatever is entailed in getting a rune one. Let's get ourselves out of this filthy place. Now probably isn't a bad time to explain why. Why Legends Quest? Why all this effort in such a big exception? And the answer to that, well, there's two answers, really. Both of which are that there are things that we can access within our area, having done Legends Quest, that aren't accessible without doing Legends Quest, and it is kind of weird. We can, within our area, get all of the materials required to build a fancy jewelry box, but Despite the existence of an item called Charged Dragonstone Jewelry Squirrel, we can't even use that, as far as I know, without having Legends Quest completed. So, I wanted to have Legends Quest completed so we can build that further down the road. Now, less far down the road, we could also get the drops, the Dragon Spear, and the Dragon Square Shield half. Which, if we don't have Legends Quest completed, instead of showing up as that item and just not being able to use it before having the quest completed, it shows up as either a Nature or a Chaos Talisman, neither of which we should ever be able to use. So, I, I guess I was in a little bit of a rush to get those useless drops off of our drop table and have the dragon equipment show up, I, it would be very rare for it to actually appear, but if we get the drop, I would much rather it actually be that drop and us work towards it rather than just useless talisman drops. And making this video is the first that I've ever realized that we'll need a rune axe in this process at all. So needless to say, it has thrown a bit of a wrench into things. Let's make this Mithril Axe and then go give completing the Legends quest with only a Mithril instead of a Rune Hatchet a shot. And if that doesn't work... If that doesn't work, we're gonna have to make a decision. Let's hope Mithril counts as a very sharp, very tough axe. Okay, let's see how this goes. So we have the seeds germinated, we go to plant them, and we get this. Making it real clear. This moment that he knew, he fucked up. Alright, so uh, I know we started, we got just over 8% Hosidious favor. I think going all the way to 75% and getting Rune Axe that way, it, it would just be too much. I don't want to complete this quest like that. I still will probably want to grind out getting the, like, 10 Dragon Stones within Valador to make the fancy jewelry box at some point. It's got two really good teleports, but... I think that's getting put off as, along with the possibility to make the dragon stone or the 
dragon square shield and to get the dragon spear until we can get a rune hatchet. Legit. So we are, at a later point, going to finish this quest, but there are only one of three ways we can go about finishing this quest. Either we can get really lucky from treasure trails, either through the clue juggling changes that Jagex just implemented, which should make it somewhat easier if we go that way, or by getting really lucky with Lucky Implings at level 89 Hunter. Alternatively, if we end up getting Cerberus kill count before we end up beating Legend's Quest, the Rune Hatchet is on Cerberus's drop table. That's the second way we could get it, and the third way is just grinding all the way up to 85 smithing and making our own rune hatchet that way, which might end up being the way we more or less have to go about doing it. I'm not sure yet. I don't want to waste these food and the combat items while we still got them, so I'm going to go do some Slayer for a little bit, and then it is likely going to be a whole lot of Hunter. Our next goal, unless we get, like, exceedingly lucky, is going to be hunting magpie implings. Okay, let's see what Turiel's got for us. Spiders. This task sucked. That is a bronze boot drop. I think that's a stat boost over the frog leather? Maybe? For what we've got left for supplies. And health. This is probably enough Slayer for a while. So, this is pretty close to the end of the video. For the rest of this, I just want to show you where our stats are currently sitting. Now, here I've got a little sneak peek for what will hopefully be the definitive better map of our region lock in yellow, including in red the places where we can go if we have a Slayer task to go there. And now for the tiny little bit, which is the rest of this video, all we have left to do is to sell our initiate armor and to make as much space as we can get ready to dedicate the next good chunk of our RuneScape life to impling hunting. But that all said, and this shit show of a video behind us, I want to thank everybody for watching, especially those of you who are still around at this point. Y'all are real ones. Thanks for tolerating us both on this Falador area only-ish journey. We will someday be able to make our own or otherwise acquire our own rune hatchet totally legitimately within our area. We will conquer the Legends quest and unlock the fancy jewelry box and the dragon square shield and dragon spear drops. Those will be things that we accomplish. And we are going to defeat Cerberus sooner or later. For now though, we are hanging up our armor. That's weird. We just sold it. Doesn't even show any extra stock in the store. Oh well, it's not important. And we are going to go pick up our butterfly net. It was a good one episode sword but we'll get another one once we need it. While we're in here, we might as well upgrade from the regular butterfly net to the magical butterfly net. I wish we were getting more nature runes though, that would be nice. I've been starting to grind away a little bit in Piro Piro. Also just saw uh, Jagex announced membership price increases and been looking at getting the Falador area account ready for 
a season of free to play, and I've got to say, I'm a little conflicted right now. We may craft a mine tiara. I don't know if that's a members only object or not. It probably is, but it doesn't really matter because pure essence is definitely a members only object, unfortunately. Well, Puro Puro Hunter is the priority for this account once we get membership back. While we don't have membership, I could be training mining and smithing in the Dwarven Mines. But our Farmer's Affinity bonus is up and we've got this Falador Clue Scroll, we might as well go check. And also, since I won't be able to access one if or when my membership isn't active anymore, I should pick up a brown crafting cape from the player-owned house. And let's see what kind of a clue we get from this easy clue step. And... Second Falador clue. Odd. Okay. The house we do most of our cooking at. Let's see what happens here. Is this the right drawer set? We just got what might be our first easy casket completely from Falador. Is that a good omen? Is that is that a sign of something? I don't know. I am... I'm curious what's in there, but I don't know if I even want to open it. I've been procrastinating this casket opening for a little while. I don't know if it's that... Uh, I don't want to open it and ruin the surprise, or if I just don't want to be disappointed. But anyway, let's see what is in this easy reward casket. Huh. Full black and studded chaps. That actually isn't a terrible clue for us. Huh. It's nothing special, but that is not a bad clue, it could have been a whole lot worse. Also, there is either an easy or medium Falador area clue step which requires a black plate body, so if I had nothing better to wear, I'd probably wear it. Yep, this right here is the fashion scape. Look at how color coordinated we are. Got all the way back to the wheat field and realized we can do Tears of Guthics. Will be the last time for a while, unless my circumstances change a little bit. Runecrafting experience? Runecrafting experience. Two Runecraft levels. Nice.